After looking at redox reactions and the transfer of electrons, let's look at how that transfer of electrons can be harnessed in order to form an electric current. Let's look at a battery, a chemical reaction that can actually generate an electric current. Alexander Volta is credited with being one of the first people to create a battery, and that's where the word volt comes from. And what Volta was able to do was he was able to generate some electrochemical cells. These are redox reactions. But the trick is you separate the oxidation from the reduction. You have the site where electrons are being released separated from the site where the electrons are being absorbed. By separating them, you can then have electrons travel from one site to the other. And you do that usually with a wire. So that means you now have electrons traveling across a wire and you've generated an electric current. This is one of Volta's early batteries. It's actually called a voltaic pile pile because he piled up a bunch of things one on top of the other. He did it very cleverly. He alternated areas of oxidation and reduction. He used zinc and silver plates in his voltaic pile. Zinc is a very reactive metal. Remember, one of our properties of metals is that they like to lose electrons. So zinc likes to oxidize. Silver is not a very reactive metal. It's one of our noble metals. And so if silver doesn't like to oxidize, it actually provides a site for reduction. Volta then separated these metal discs by little wafers of plaster, and he soaked it in brine. And brine is simply a really saturated salt water solution. So he piled on silver, brine, zinc, brine, silver, brine, zinc, brine, and stacked them up over and over and over again. Instead of looking at the entire pile, I think it's easier to look at individual cells. Let's just look at one site of oxidation and one site of reduction instead of an entire pile like Volta's. Here's an image from the text. Now they're using copper instead of silver because copper is less expensive, but we know that copper is also a fairly unreactive metal. That's why it's used for coins. And zinc, as we said earlier, is rather reactive. You've separated the zinc and the copper from each other and you've connected them with a piece of wire, allowing electrons to flow from where electrons are being released, oxidation, to where electrons are being absorbed, reduction. You've also put the pieces of metal in solutions, and the solutions contain the ions of that metal. So the zinc electrode is placed into a zinc sulfate solution, which contains the zinc ion, and the copper electrode is placed in a copper two sulfate solution, so the copper two ion is in solution. The two solutions are then connected by something called a salt bridge. The salt bridge serves the same purpose as the brine-soaked plaster discs that Volta used. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Let's break down the different parts of this battery, and then we'll talk about how they work. So first, you have the electrodes. These are the strips of metal. You have an anode, which is where the oxidation occurs. Now remember, we said that oxidation is an increase in charge, which means you're losing electrons. So the site of oxidation, the anode, electrons are being given off. This is the negative terminal on your battery. The cathode is where reduction is occurring. We said that reduction is a gaining of electrons in order to reduce your oxidation state. So the electrons will be going from the area of oxidation to the area of reduction, and they do that across the wire. And as we've already said here, the zinc is the reactive metal. It likes to oxidize. So in this example, zinc is the anode, which makes copper the cathode. The wire allows the electrons to go from the anode to the cathode, from where the electrons are lost to where the electrons are gained, or from the site of oxidation to the site of reduction. And then the salt bridge. The salt bridge allows the charges to be balanced. By moving electrons from one site to the other, you're gonna start unbalancing charge very quickly. The salt bridge allows that charge to be rebalanced. You'll often see the salt bridge used with a common ion. So for example, I have zinc sulfate in one flask and copper two sulfate in another flask. In this setup, it wouldn't be uncommon to see the salt bridge made with some compound that also contains the sulfate ion. A closer look and you'll see what's happening. This side is the zinc side. And as we said, the zinc likes to oxidize. The zinc is gonna oxidize from neutral to a two plus charge, which means that the neutral zinc is the zinc that's in the piece of metal. It's the actual electrode and the zinc two plus is in solution. So at this site, on this electrode, the zinc is going to leave the metal and start floating around in solution to go from neutral zinc to zinc two plus. So as this battery runs, and you can kind of see this in this image, that zinc electrode will start to deteriorate. 
as the zinc ions go into solution. The electrons travel across the wire to the cathode, and then just the opposite happens. Here, the copper ions in solution will reduce to become neutral copper. So what will happen is you'll see the copper ions floating around. They will gain electrons and become elemental pure copper. And as that happens, this electrode, this cathode, will actually build up and gain mass. So the anode will deteriorate as the metal turns into aqueous ions. The cathode will build up as aqueous ions turn into solid metal. And then finally, I said the salt bridge is there to balance out the charge. So in this example, they're using sodium sulfate as a salt bridge. As this battery runs, we're moving negative charge from the anode to the cathode. So what's happening is the, this side is losing negative charge. This side, where the zinc is, is becoming more and more positive. The side with the copper is going to become more and more negative. It's gaining electrons. Well, to help balance out the charge, the salt bridge allows ions to flow between the two flasks. And what happens is the sulfate ion, the anion, starts flowing to the anode to replace the negative charge that's lost through the wire. And the positive ion, the cation, will start flowing to the cathode, and that will help balance out the negative charge that's being gained by the wire. And this keeps the charges balanced throughout the reaction.